o'clock. And first thing I want to say, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, first thing I'd like to appreciate Steve Gray sitting in for Melissa Donaldson as our clerk. Melissa's father is in the hospital and she's dealing with all way more important things than uh, a planning board meeting. So thank you, Steve. So the first uh, item on the agenda is the approval of the April 25th minutes. Do we have any? That wasn't here. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, suggestions, good. deletions? Well, good I, to I, me. I, no, I, well, I, I do. Okay. Um, so I just want to make a note that uh, no, Nicole... Mayor Whiteside was seated on the board in Kathy Paget's absence. Yes, you are right. So I just want to absolutely make, right. I just want to make sure that that's noted in the minutes. Beyond that, is there a motion to approve the minutes as amended? So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Are there no abstentions? Uh, and so uh, we have uh, yeah. one abstention. Uh, thank you, um, Aaron and Kathy uh, Paget were not here at the at, at last meeting. So officer and committee reports. Uh, Treasurer's report. Sure. Um, we have 86.8 percent of our budget remaining. We spent 558 dollars and 27 cents since the last meeting. The big ticket items were salaries for our clerk and newspaper advertising and uh, postage. And so the newspaper advertising and postage, in theory, get recouped by the costs um, by the fees in the applications. Okay. Secretary's report. Uh, we've got two public hearings tonight. Um, uh, one for the Remick Brothers Irrevocable Trust and Harry Remick. Um, it's two lot subdivision. And also a garden, Gardner and Susan Norcross boundary line adjustment. Uh, so those are two things for tonight. Um, other items, it uh, looks like we have three wetlands permit applications that have come into the um, into us. Um, one on Shakora Lake Road, one on Scott Road, and one on Shakora Road. Um, they're FYIs. FYIs, they're here for our information. Um, I don't know that any of them are going to I don't, I don't see that any of them directly relate to anything that's going to be coming before us necessarily, but... Uh, Are they all related since they're so close? I believe the... Well, the... Uh, oh, the trout habitat? The Scott Road. That's the Scott Road, which is the uh, Allen Brook trout um, habitat. Uh, and I believe that's the Shakur Lake Road as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two are related for um, trout habitat. Uh, creation or um, increasing. And the other is a um, three minor impacts, um, uh, looks like for underground electric line uh, and maybe a uh, driveway crossing. That's what, uh, that's what I have. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Pat, notified me that she has a cold, and so um, I'm going to read a statement for her for, uh, in terms of the uh, Economic Development Commission and the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Please let everyone know that our two nominations for the Lakes Region Planning Commission Awards are approved for presentation at the annual dinner. 
you should have received an email with invitation from the LRPC. People can register and pay online. The two nominees and their spouses are gratis. Becca was going to take care of making sure that one of the nominees and his wife will attend. We're being very subtle here. And I have done so with other, with the other nominee. Space at the Chase House in Meredith on June 25th, the night of the annual meetings, starting at 5, dinner at 6, is limited, so people who wish to go should register reasonably soon. Aaron is a commissioner, so I imagine he and his wife will attend. If you need me to forward the invitation and registration form, let me know. I would appreciate your letting me know who on the planning board is planning to attend. The DOT LRPC commissioner meeting Monday was very well attended, including Aaron and two other selectmen. Wet paint was highly successful, 66 paintings sold, wow, and $3,000 each to the two nonprofits were selected. Have a good meeting. That's great. Yeah. That's a really fun event. I bought a painting, I helped. That's a really good for you, yay. $22,000 with all the paintings. Okay, wow. I need a new house with more wall space if I'm going to buy paintings. Well, you rotate it. It's a Japanese oh, store. okay. You have storage for it, and you have walls for it, okay. and you have something up for six months or a year, and then you put it away, and you put something else up. But that means I need a, a, an attic that's not full as well, then. Well, you <laughs> actually, the Japanese have an entire storage building that's where they keep oh, the, okay. the art and artifacts that they're not displaying. It's, okay. That's well, we'll, we'll, a wonderful concept. We'll delve I'm just, further. I'm just killing time for you so we can get some. I'll tell you yeah, all we about do have to Japanese wait. art styles. Okay, anyway. thank you. If, we, if we're short on 7.15, we'll, we'll continue this conversation. Okay. Um, Aaron, do you have anything for the selectmen? What's going on at the selectman's office? I think there might be a few things. Yeah, uh, CMI is definitely still one of them. There's been a lot about the noise ordinance, which they're trying to work on something. And um, yeah, that kind of took my thunder with the wet paint because I went to that. That's I, I didn't think I would like that very much, but that's pretty. That's a pretty cool system she's got going on. I actually bought a painting, which was <laughs> something I thought I'd never do. Um, really, there's nothing too, too interesting going on. Um, I haven't been following the, I mean, I've been hearing about it, but I haven't been following, haven't been watching the meetings. What actually is going on with the noise ordinance? Um, the big thing is people are wondering when we're going to start enforcing it and we're just taking steps into that, and uh, mm -hmm. and then there's people that <clears throat> think it's not worth having, so it's just been back and forth, back and forth. But isn't that kind of irrelevant at this point? I mean, we have it, so people can say they may not like it, but right. it was approved by the town, so right. it does exist. Is there any research going on in terms of actually studying what kind of noise is happening on the border or whatever, whether they're violating the, the ordinance? And the, there was an article know, in the Conway Daily Sun. Yep. Did you see it yesterday? Uh, I did see it. I only browsed quickly through it. Yeah, it talked about the, um, the town is trying to choose between several um, models of Ways the, to the measure decimal the meters. decibels. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so they haven't made a decision about that yet. Not yet. <clears throat> and um, I will say the last meeting, uh, Jim Heisenschau, the owner of CMI, did come, and he did shed a little bit of light on what they're doing because, like, at this point, we're just in the dark. I mean, we haven't been up there. We got to go up there. We got invited up there. Um, but. Oh. Jim was saying some steps that they're doing up there to try to eliminate some of the noise. And I guess they've had um, noise specialists up there seeing how they can damper it down. 
Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was actually very good of him just to show up to kind of give a lot of the citizens that have questions just a little bit of like insight of what they're doing because that's the big thing. People want to know what they're doing. We don't know what he's doing for sound and him coming in and telling us that they're going to try to um, put grass in on all the ledge so it eats up some of the sound. Um, he's been working with um, sound fence um, companies. So mm -hmm. He's building berms. Yep. One thing he talked about in the article. Yep. Well, yeah, it'll be... They're like sound densing fences. It's like to keep the rays from going out. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Okay. It's ongoing. It's ongoing, for sure. Okay, thank you. So the Tamworth Conservation Commission, what's the latest on that front? Um, <clears throat> the majority of the board voted to expend $18,300 um, to purchase a piece of property that the community school owns and put it into conservation. And uh, it's a triangle that is on Bunker Hill Road that borders the town-owned property um, that surrounds Jackman Pond. And it's two and a half acres. How many acres? Two and a half. So, that requires coming to the board, our board? It would require a boundary line adjustment. Um, um, only if it's, so it's a separate parcel that the school owns apart from its other parcels, so it's a standalone parcel. Oh, that was different deal. from what Nelson told me, so. I believe it's a standalone parcel. He said it was part of the big parcel. Was it? Yeah. Okay. That could very well be. Yeah. So then it would Either be way, um, it would either be a merger, a purchase and then a merger, or it would just be a boundary line adjustment. Yeah. It would be from A to B moved to A and a different B. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't even have that much information. I mean, is it something? I did my phone. Is it a recommendation that she might uh, that? They might come to the board for a conceptual review. Uh, I don't think report. it will require a conceptual review. One of the difficulties of conceptual reviews is they don't include plans. And right. So, having already had a conceptual review telephone conversation, which was kind of difficult, I don't recommend the board trying to do that without plans. I suggested to Nelson that um, that he get together with someone from the community school and one or two members of the board to just look at and then advise them what direction to go in. You know, not have a quorum, but just have you and me meet with him or any me meet with him okay. and say, you know, this is the route we think you should take. Not not a conceptual, but just what, you know, rather than them, you know, rather than the Conservation Commission having to, um, to hire a, an engineer prematurely, we could say this is the route you want to take and then they could figure out what they need to do in terms of plans to come to us for a boundary line adjustment. So okay. if that's in fact what it was. So. All right, thank you. Yeah, and I told him I was available, you know, this weekend. Okay. After I get back from Maine on Saturday. Okay, so take advantage of that. So yeah, so we'll we'll figure it out, and if if they can get it all figured out, um, and pictures and stuff done by June first, then it'll be on the June meeting for action. Okay. All right. And that's all I have. So, a CIP report. Do you want to offer that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> we met, do I have to say the date? Let's see. Oh, it was last, it was last Tuesday. May 15th. <clears throat> and assignments were made uh, amongst the members of the CIP committee to contact various uh, organizations in town for the purpose of getting from them their plan for the uh, CIP expenditures for the coming year, as well as to talk about the seven year, I believe it is, maybe two, maybe five year. Anyway, uh, proposals that, and it's see six. where they, six, six of course. You, you had, yeah, right at average. <laughs> I, was, I was hedging it. Yeah. Um, anyway, to see where their uh, plans are, are at this point for those six-year expenditures, six years out. And 
uh, you and I are contacting the Glenn Johnson, the man at the... At yep. So everyone has assignments, right. in other words. Right. I think we're pretty much clued into... It's a, it's a, I think we have seven members on the CIP now. Right. And I would like to nominate two new ones, because um, that's our role, is to nominate um, new members. Mm -hmm. And so we have... Um, Sue, uh, Suzanne Susan Ticehurst and Suzanne Morgan yes. joining the board. So it, I would like to hear a nomination for those two to be on the CIP uh, committee. I'll make that nomination. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, that's great. That's great. And so... Um, the only other thing I might add... Uh, the schedule of when people are supposed to turn in their Sure, you, you can carry on with that. Well, we're supposed to contact the various committees in the next by the end of June, and by July they're supposed to have, re, have produced all the documentation that we're going to need. We're supposed to have a report done by next October to meet with the selectmen in September, presumably, to okay that report and hopefully have it finalized by the end of October. Right? It's, exactly. <laughs> well done, well done. And so, you know, the planning board needs to be a participant in this too, if, um, as to what our needs would be. And so we, we need to have uh, some discussion about that as well. I know we've offered some suggestions, but um, I think we could expand some of those as well. If we think about it. I think that's what this letter is about that was in my yes. box. E exactly. So the, the there's board. a letter to all the department heads with what they've offered in the past mm -hmm. and to how to adjust it for the next six years. Okay. Um, education, any training? Um, yeah, uh, I've been looking at the May-June uh, town and city from the Municipal Association um, and there's a local officials workshop on Saturday, June 2nd at the Concord offices, 9 to 4, lunch on your own. If you've never gone to one of the local officials workshop, this is a good opportunity to just sort of learn the nuts and bolts of um, responsibilities of being an elected official. There's also a right to know one on June 8th. Um, and if you're interested in roads, there's a workshop on um, streets, a new road hard, to, a new hard road to travel, which is the book they put out. Which I don't know if you've read it because you're a roads person. I find it really fascinating. It tells you a lot about how New Hampshire roads are done, and that's on Tuesday, June nineteenth, um, in Concord. So those are the workshops that the Municipal Association is doing coming up in June. There's also one, there's a legislative wrap up on June sixth. There's one on right to know if people are interested in that. Um, and I will say that this issue of town and city um, has a lot of stuff on municipal officials, common law, municipal liability, stuff like that, um, that I'm finding fascinating reading. So um, it will be in the, in the lower mailbox or the planning board mailbox if you want to, you know, sign it out, look at it, and bring it back. Um, it'll be there. Or, or just come in and, you know, when the offices are open, come in and spend a jolly half an hour browsing through it. And as I said, the older ones that are in there, I'm going to weed out pretty darn soon. So. Yep. And there's a local one in Albany that I, that was passed around. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's, that's, not, the, uh, that's not the municipal association. No. Um, and that one is... Um, June 20, 20 something? 3rd, 23rd. June 23rd, is it? Okay, thank you. And Steve Gray sent that to me. I did. I got it from <laughs> uh, the chairman of the Albany Select Board. Thank you. Certainly. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, everyone got the information on the, in the email, so... Yeah, I was um, looking right. for well, where it is, but uh, it okay. got buried in... Uh, okay, so... Um, Dom... We have a board member missing. Would you like to sit for, uh, at the table? Am I going to get killed? <laughs> I 
hope no. not. <laughs> Do your best Pat Farley okay. imitation. I'll just sit here quietly. I appreciate your comment. At the last minute. Um, Great. It's, it's June 23rd from 9 to 11.30 at the Albany Town Hall. So, um, I think the next order of business is a is that we have two public hearings scheduled. Um, we take them one at a time. I'd like the secretary's re uh, recommendation uh, in regards to the application. Uh, the first one being the Remick Brothers Iroka Iroka Oh boy, did I get that wrong? <laughs> oh dear me! Irrevocable. Irrevocable. Okay, Irrevocable. I, 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 I could never get Spanish together. So anyway, irrevocable. I think I got it. Trust and Harry Remick, Two Lot Subdivision, Old Mail Road, Tax Map four o six, Lot sixty one. Do we have a recommendation from the secretary in regards to the application? Yes, uh, I believe that the application is complete. That every everything that uh, we asked for is here in our okay. in our hands. So we should have a vote to uh, accept the application as complete. So moved. Second. Any uh, further discussion? Otherwise, we'll go. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. Who's so second? I'm going to call the Eric. public. Hearing to order at uh, 7.23. So, so why don't you introduce yourself, uh, Ron? Yeah, I'm uh, Ron Remick, Jr., a licensed land surveyor with White Mountain Survey. I'm most of the board members, a couple of Okay, so who don't you know? Maybe we need an Kathy introduction. And, and and probably Andy, I don't know. Okay, so... I'm sure we paths have crossed. But yeah, yeah. No, okay, nice here we go. Properly, yeah, I should say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like those red lines. Thank you. Um, so... I'm sorry. Yes, please. So I'm, I'm going to just state a couple of Reminders. First of all, turn off your cell phones, please. Um, any any person with an interest in the matter may testify in person or in writing. Any material submitted to the board as evidence shall become part of the public record and will not be returned. Any person who wishes to speak shall be recognized by the chairperson and shall state her or his name and address. Any questions of the applicant or agent must go through the chairperson, usually. And members of the board may ask questions at any point during the hearing. Uh, so, the secretary's report on the proposal. Uh, just um, any comments about the proposal? No, I, I would... Just I would defer pass, to, pass it on to okay. Ron to Thank just you. give us a, an overview of... Um, I give you an overview, but I also have, there's a mess of uh, waiver requests. Yes. Right. Yes, you so, do. So, and so, that's me, okay. I mean, we, but we typically... I'll give you a first little brief synopsis yeah, please. of the thing. Um, this property is uh, on the map up here. You can see in green, um, that's an old mail road. And uh, this was um, family property that my grandfather purchased in 1940. It's been used uh, by the family as a woodlot ever since. Um, then it was owned by my dad, had half of it, and Harry had, um, they each had 50%. And now um, my dad's percent is in a trust that my brother and I are the trustees of. Um, so the proposal is, it's 111 acres. So each lot, it's to cut it in two. 
each lot would have 525 feet of road frontage, um, and each lot would be 55.5 acres in size. Um, the unique thing too is each lot already has two existing driveways that enter onto each lot. Mm. So, wow. Are they driveways, wood roads, sort of a little um, bit of both? Well, actually, oh, this would be a wood road here. Yeah, that's that's a wood road, this but that's been there since the 1800s. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and the other one is a is a a used driveway that actually goes to the property to the north. Oh, okay. Goes. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I actually I looked at the, I put the NRCS soil maps on the thing and using the Tamil subdivision regulations appendix A size the lots using the soils and slopes on there and each one comes out with enough property for 55 lots so I think we'll have a reason to be able to grant a lot of these waivers for the request. <laughs> Is there any steep slopes in this at all? On, on um, at all? There is, if you know, I mean, it It doesn't, it, it's not super steep, but I mean, it does go uphill a lot. Yeah. A, 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 any of you know, it's the airstrip is up at the top there, so I'm sure a lot of you may have been up there at one point. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the, uh, the northwest corner up near the airstrip is that there's a camp up there I believe is that on the same property? That would be the northeast. Yeah. Is it the northeast? This, this mm -hmm. road here yeah, comes road. all the way up through, and this used to be uh, Roy Hammond's property. I don't think anybody knew that, yeah. and that's now owned by Lisa Keith. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a house out further beyond here. Yeah. And the other thing, the intention, I, I said that this has been a woodlot since the 40s. I think these two guys still intend it to be a woodlot. You know, they, that's what they intend to do. Yeah. No building. Okay. You said these two guys. Who are these two guys? Pardon me? You said these two guys. Who are these two guys? Well, this is his dad. Uh, oh, okay. That's Ron Sr. Okay. And that's, that's Harry. Harry oh, Brown. okay. Sorry. Um, do you want to talk about the waiver? Sure. I got through those. I have those on uh, three different sheets. Right. You grouped yeah. them. Thank you. I tried to yes. group them. Yeah, yeah but that's I thought great. You could that vote really helps. Them in a group like yep. that. Yep. 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 So there's the North Arrow somewhere. <laughs> uh, up in the top. Oh uh, uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So, mo so most of the, most of the waivers are for things that would be more important if there were actual development being proposed or smaller right. size lots. If there's smaller like size and and you know if they ever decided they're going to develop it and they're going to build a house, they're going to still have to do a test pick, get a septic design, and all that stuff. But I mean we. Like I said in the beginning, we have enough land there by looking at the soil map and the slope for that. We're providing for like 55 lots before we... You know. Right. If you came back, if, if you decided to re-subdivide, you'd be back in front of us. Oh, yeah. Right. And if it was just a question of putting a single dwelling on it, there's so much land so much that land. it's not going to re require... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the key thing being that that if it was if it was developed enough to need this stuff, it would be back in front of us for a subdivision. Mm -hmm. right. right. Okay. Um, as far as waivers, unless you have any. Else well, I mean, um, well, maybe I'll interrupt you just a sure. second. I know is we there, do have an abundance. Yeah. I mean, is there any uh, 
members of Butters or public that would like to make a comment at this point before we start with the waivers? Yes, uh, yes, John. John introduce Mersfelder. yourself, please. John Mersfelder, M E R S F E L D U R. Yeah. Um, actually, I, well, I'd like the board to indulge me, uh, if it would. It might not be a particularly pertinent comment, but um, uh, as to the project, um, 55 lots, I assume, is a hypothetical number because there would be other constraints that would actually reduce that number. But um, just assuming that it was possible to have a large number of houses up there, uh, although that's not the intent, say there were 15 or 20 houses, I'm just curious as to whether the board um, has any um, restrictions on the number of houses given the capacity of a gravel road to hold um, a, a, a large increase in the number of cars. That being originally created presumably for horses. I, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> to me, the very short answer would be, like Ron said, a anything beyond, uh, and Becca, anything beyond one house essentially on each lot would require coming before the board again for a some sort of subdivision approval. At which time, any number of things from uh, driveway versus town road versus any of the other constraints that there might be versus just a that have to do I, I with safety there might be a consideration of regional impacts on I don't know in terms of the capacity that that well, could hold. I think I think uh, we always keep in mind the safety and welfare of the of the general public, and that's one of the provisions for. Um, approval of, of an application and um, if there's other consider considerations such as traffic or road conditions uh, that would that would be part of our consideration yeah it would be it would obviously it would be a consideration if should that happen I mean you know, I welcome your your uh, your putting it forth as a as a hypothetical yeah, exactly. but as as we're all saying, if anything other than each one of these being used as either a woodlot or a single-family home were to change, um, it would require a resubdivision, uh, which would come back in front of us. And at that point, there would be the consideration of whether a lot was being turned into four lots, six lots, or whether it was actually being developed with a single private access road with lots of dwellings in behind. So at that point, whatever configuration the applicant had in mind would would be brought to bear on it. I mean, there is only so much road frontage. So in terms of resubdivision, just traditional chop, chop, chop would only allow a certain number. But it is a large area. It does have the potential to have a single access road being put in oh, sure. with development further back. But okay. that's, you know, that's again, and you know, this is this is again a consideration where, um, you know, in terms of planning for the town's future, um, we might be in a better position if we had zoning that allowed a developer to incur be encouraged to do some kind of conservation subdivision there in a way that our sub our our pure and simple subdivision regulations don't allow. Yeah. Um, but but again that you know that would be the kind of use that this property might lend itself to an access road going in and then multiple properties at the back that were clustered um, with a lot of open space around them. Yeah I, I kind of found it as an unnecessary distraction that a, um, on a subdivision of this kind where they're just dividing it equally between current owners, that it's required to have the number of lots even indicated. Um, it's not required. No, it's not. No, that was voluntary. That, that was just a voluntary thing. He was just I, making a comment. I was just making a comment to show actually how 
greater potential these lots and, and we're really showing that they're 50 times greater than what we're doing what what you what is required for a one lot for one lot per the town regulations I'm sorry if I Oh, made that more confusing. Okay. I, I, I kind of assumed that it was a requirement of, the, of having a subdivision, which no, in but your case, completely unnecessary. What you're supposed to do is actually look at the soils and slopes table and, and calculate what the lot would support. And, you know, usually you do a development, you might have like 1.3 lots or something. That's mm -hmm. what it's equal. This is equal to 55, so it's way over what's required. Right. Right. And just to make you put your mind maybe more at ease, this is a great place. I mean, our family wouldn't have had it for this long. Um, it's a place you can go up there, get away, and it, it's just a nice place to relax, as you oh, know. I'm, I'm very familiar. And we, we've had three abutters that have actually called with concerns and worried that something's going to happen, and we've reassured them and they, you know, you know, that it's you know. still going to be a wood lot. Oh, no, I, I, I had no doubt that that was the case. It just was, again, kind of addressing the planning board in that way, the yeah. case that well, was I'm sorry, kind of a necessary I, I thing. Steered you wrong. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? Well, you can continue with waivers then. Okay, waivers. I think if we start with uh, section F8. <clears throat> Okay, if Andy has that sheet there, I got eight A, B, C, D, and E. And that is for showing water courses, ponds, standing water, ledge outcrops, stone walls, and other natural features. And we obviously showed whatever is close to the perimeter, but to try to detail all that in the middle is, is uh, a little excessive for these two lots. Fair enough. Uh, any? I, I agree. I, we, we, I mean, we, we vote on we yeah, vote on, yeah, we, on we, approving we, the waivers yeah, after, separately. Oh, after, separately. At, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. we do we that vote after we close the hearing. Yeah. but we discuss them at so, this point. To, okay. yeah. So at this point, it's just a, a presentation as to the right. reasoning. And yeah, you know, that was a grouping of natural features that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The next one I have is uh, F. 11A, which has for topographic contours, 12B for wetland delineation, and 13A showing location of a 75 foot wall radius. I'm sorry, 75. 75 foot protective wall radius. Thank you. And then the next grouping um, is under section F. 14 and have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and that's a waiver request for test pits, prick tests, um, the 4,000 square foot area, the soil test date, soil test results, prick test date, and prick test results. So that's all the research for septic support mm -hmm. and with lots this size yeah. your argument is that there's some place there somewhere yeah right. uh, are there any further questions from the board any discussion otherwise from the public or the agent well hearing none um, I just I, I, I mean, it's, it's really none of our business what the fam, a family chooses to do, but just so I'm understanding it correctly, the two of you has owned the property jointly, and in in moving moving forward in, in an organizational way, planning for the future, right. you're separating it so you each own your own lot. Yeah, so right. the yeah. next generation, exactly. you're exactly. not... Why? You don't want to have 12 people in the next generation owning it all together? <laughs> I, I, talked to a, I talked to another about her and she said the exact same thing. She says once it gets to that third generation, it starts getting a little more It gets calm. hairy, yes. yes. Yeah. Exactly. So I commend you for making the decision. Well, if there's no further comment, um, I'm going to close the public hearing. What do we have? Uh, 740. 
Um, let me let me get to my so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, so what I what I what we need to do is to go over um, each of the waivers, yeah, right, and to um, just to vote on each one. So why don't you just quickly? Yeah, they've been summarized. Maybe yep. we can just quickly summarize them again, and we'll take a vote. Okay. So um, I was taking per 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 per, per sheet group. Um, so um, section F eight A is uh, water courses. F eight B is ponds. F eight eight C is standing water. F eight D are ledge outcrops. F8E are uh, stone walls and other natural features. Um, again, both lots are 55 and a half acres and no proposed development. Um, and the, the additional cost, time, effort to map and show all this stuff would be unnecessary for, or, or would be excessive um, to require. Um, do we vote per... Waiver. Um, I, I think, yeah, why do we vote for per waiver sheet as, 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 as presented? I think I think we can vote per group if we allow them to be put on the page together. That was what we were advised. Okay. So, do I hear a... I motion that we um, grant the waiver request uh, for items F8A through F8E3. F8E. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Okay, next set. So, next grouping um, uh, Section F11A, topographic contours. F12B, uh, wetland delineation. And F13A, the location of 75 foot well radius. And again, it's this. Same, same reasoning um, in that the properties are so large. There's no proposed development um, to require this to be mapped and shown would be <coughs> excessive given the situation. Motion to grant the waivers for F11A, F12B, and F13A. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Um, next grouping, F14A are test pits, F14B, perk test locations, F14C, 4,000 square foot areas, F14D, soil test date, F14E, soil test results, F14F, perk test date, and F14G perk test results. Um, again, the same. Same reasons same given. Reason. Um, I motion to grant the waiver for F14A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. And that's it. Those are all the waivers. Okay. So I make a motion to grant the application, uh, to grant the subdivision. Is there a I'll second that. Sec okay, we have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So um, that's been granted. And so uh, I'm wondering... If Melissa has the form that we fill out, oh, she printed one. She printed it out. So. And do you have a mylar? I have. I have mylar. So. Mylar so what we can do is, is we can do all this right here and now. I like that. Since you have this, everything well prepared for us. We, we like it when it's neat and tidy like this. That was a. Okay. So. Okay. We have to sign all. Okay. We have to sign these. 
So I'm, so I'll tell you what, just let's line up all the maps. And the magic, and magic the, marker. And the magic, magic marker. Do we have the magic, magic, magic marker ready? Uh, no. Uh, I'll get it. I've got a magic, magic marker. Do you, do you have a magic, the magic for uh, Nyla? You do? I have a magic I mean, we have one. Just Brand new Sharpie. I guess that'll work. Is that going to work? Yep. If it works, it works. I'm okay if it works. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a book lunch on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I'm not sure what hours I'm gonna be there, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I picked oh, it up on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll leave put it out. You put it out on the exchange. Yeah, I'll put it out on the exchange. I was just checking with Katie what time she wanted to be there. Probably oh, there it's going eleven to Shoot. three, so I'll probably be there like one to three. Uh, you know, sign books, sell books. Okay. okay. So let's do this. Okay. So where I'm signing, it's going to be here. I know it is. It's right there. There it is. Thank you. So you date it. Date it. Date it. Date 523. Date it. Sign it. And then I'll sign it below. Five, or Andy actually. Three, three, I don't know. It's a member. 18. Secretary. Secretary. Chairman. No. I don't care. You go ahead and sign it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to. You want to sign and pass along? We'll tell you what. Do you, you mind if we go yeah. top to bottom? I don't that, mind. We'll just pass it down. Is that all right? You all talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. And then get a drink. <laughs> Melissa typically would fill this all out, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, I, we do need come, to we do come. need to fill that out tonight, or well, it, it can happen anytime. I'll. Yeah, I think it can happen as long as it happens. Like soon. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's one. Hand me the bed I mean, boiler. We'll hand it into the office tomorrow. to the trust, but working for other people, sometimes those are recorded at the registry, sometimes they're not. And I'm just curious, I, I redacted or took a lot of the stuff we out. Had a problem, we had a problem in the past in that you really do have to have, um, you ha actually have to have the owners, um, and it was with another party in town that was in a trust, and the signature didn't come from the lawyers, it came from the bookkeepers. Something like that, and it was just, we went back and forth until we actually. Um, so, so, what I did was, in, in what I gave you, I gave you like the, maybe the first and second page and the last page. Yeah. It took all the other stuff else, but, right. but that's what you're looking for. Right. Okay. Looking to make the signature, make sure that the, sig the, the, the signatures that we're getting is legally empowered by the owners. You might have to do that afterwards. I'm going to refer this. To maybe Melissa can help me out. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Here. But I do notice that the boundary is smaller too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I know. I mean, I don't even have a draft card in front of me. Oh, that's okay. I, mean, that's I, okay. Sure I, I think out, we're okay. But, we're okay. Um, um, we okay. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I can bring this home. I'll scan it. Or, 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 or just, okay. Who's doing the delivery of the rest of Well, Sheldon did the last I, one. I don't mind doing it. It's a motorcycle ride. I mean, oh, 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 oh. I mean it's whatever. If, unless you, you have a reason. You have a special reason, Mylar sack for your I motorcycle? Did, you know what? I do. I created it. I made one. Yeah, I did. I mean, if, if by the way, if you, thank you. I mean, if you, I don't need to go, or you know, let me know, or if you want to go, let me know. Does it go to the register of deeds? Yes. Okay. This is mine. Okay. Um, Okay, so we're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have another public hearing. See you at the History Center. Thank you. See you guys. Nice to you. All right. Whenever, whenever you're set, take. You wanted four fresh copies. Yes, thank you very much. Here you go. Okay, swap these out. You want to take the old ones? Why not? Okay. Thanks, Paul. Oh. Okay. Might not be as easy as, as normal for you to get up and so you know, that. You, so you, we ought to um, yes. discuss yeah. the uh, completeness of the application. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, I believe the application is complete, that everything that we asked for okay. has been delivered, notified properly. Okay. Motion to accept is complete. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So I'm opening the public hearing at uh, 7.53. Do you used to have a cork board with that? So I still have it. Probably do. We can take a map and put it up there and you can clip to it. That's the cork board behind that. Yeah, yeah. Someone couldn't come to that. It's in the front. Um, we will, uh, he sent a letter, um, which will be horizontally or vertically? Uh, horizontally, just because we would like to come here. Oh, I printed out a copy of that. What happened to the video? Okay. Paul, do you want to uh, Would someone else be courteous yourself? enough to uh, put it up there? All right. And if we are lacking, we could certainly... All, sure. the, all the changes in between were the, was the, was the setting of bounds, right? Yes. Yeah. So, we could... Do you want another one up there? On, the, uh, on your desk? I. Do we need another one over here? That'd be good. I, I guess one more. Okay. I have one. Okay, so I'm Paul King, representing Gardner, Norcross, and his wife Susan. Uh, they own on the south side of 113A. 
Uh, if you go up 113A north from the village, you go past uh, Gardner Hill Road. The uh, road takes a sharp bend to the west, and you go through past a couple of houses tucked in the trees, and you come to a large field. That's Gardner and Susan's house. Okay, and presently there's five lots of records shaped just like this. Okay, one of them, their house lot, has extensive frontage. And uh, the the others uh, do not. Are you wanting this done? What's that? Are you part of this? Yeah, I just wanted. To... Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, um, what Gardner and Susan would like to do is to reconfigure these four lots that are on the north side of the river um, into lots that meet your regulations as far as area and frontage and soils and slopes and all that good kind of stuff. So we're ending up with uh, four lots here, this lot being Gardner and Susan's house lot, uh, this lot here being one that they'd like to reserve for their daughter, uh, this lot here which also comes down to the river uh, has Gardner's uh, shed on it and then this lot here would be for their son. There is also one lot on the south side of the river, um, and that lot will not change. I have a question. Paul, just to refresh my... Weren't you before the board before with a conceptual... Is, is this pretty much the same thing that we looked at? Earlier, I was, time. but you wouldn't look at it if you remember that. <laughs> I explained it, and it's basically well, we, we the same. Made, but it's sort of the same thing. Right. And then I have one other question. Um, there was a question about an abutter that wanted to be in attendance. Yeah, there is a letter from an abutter. Yeah. Hi, my so name is Don Smith. I'm an attorney from Ossipy, and I'm I'm here. Okay. Jolly. Okay. Yeah. And they've written a letter, which uh, I don't know will be read into the record. Mm -hmm. Well. Um, well, I think that, I think picking the right time sure. would be. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We'll do it during the hearing. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that during the hearing. Okay. Um, it is a matter of the public record. If I can continue, yep. um, there is state subdivision approval, and that's indicated on the plans. You wouldn't find it on that plan over there, that being an older one, but the number is up in the upper right hand corner. Um, For which lot, if I may ask. Um, are the, the, the lot for the daughter, this one right here, and the lot for the son, which is this one right here. Are Those are both family. less than five yeah. acres in okay. size. All right. Yes. Thank so you. What, what was the, do you have a copy of the, uh, of the, of the sheet from the state? I do. Would you? I, 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 I should, I should let you finish here. Okay. Well, but, that should be part of the uh, application, right? Yes, I think I, I would certainly like to see that. But you can. It, 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 they were applied for concurrently, so it wouldn't be part of the application, but I can certainly give that to you. Um, so there's one item which is outstanding, and that's the state DOT driveway permit and the mylar. So I'm tonight requesting a conditional approval, conditional upon those two items. Okay, did you get that, Steve? The Mylar and the uh, driveway? State driveway. State permit. driveway approval. Yes. Do you have any waivers on this, Paul? I do. Um, I submitted topo, that plenty of topo that <coughs> far exceeds enough topo to, to show that the lots are approvable. Um, but it's a very steep bank, basically from here down to the river. And almost all of that would exceed your maximum slope, and it wouldn't be counted. So I didn't even bother. There are a few kind of steps in there that maybe some area could be added, but it was no there was no need to try to add any more area to show that the lots were approvable. They were way, way more than approvable with the area that's above that. Based on Appendix A? Yes. It's excellent soils, it's a Colton soil, and uh, the, the slopes are all pretty moderate. You've driven by there, you've seen it, it's all pretty moderate 
uh, B slope at the most uh, until you get to that steep bank and then it just phew, right down to the river. If you want to make a photocopy of that. Do you know how to? Uh, yes. Yeah. You have to have a code, right? We can do that after then. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do it right now. Yeah, if you want. Sure, That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, let, let might as well do that. So we should have what? How many <clears throat> copies do we need? You just need one for here, one, right? right? We would like, yeah, I'd like one for the. Just for, he'd just like one for the file. We don't need to all yeah. see it. We've got the number on the map. The okay. One thirteen days. So one thirteen days is. is yeah. yeah. But the state, this state approval is. Uh, there's the DOT driveway permits that are required for cut driveway cuts on state roads. And would that be for this road? That's the question I have. Is that for this um, uh, I would guess that this? one of them would be this, but for each of the for, driveway permits for each, well, this one wouldn't need one, but for each of the No, the, yeah. they have an existing driveway right here for their house. Yeah. There is an existing driveway right here, which was the many decades old driveway which went into the Florence Lustum Cottage. Um, his shop has an existing driveway coming off his uh, uh, own personal curb cut and that will have an easement on it and there's a notation about that. And then this is the lot, the daughter's lot, which will need a driveway permit. So one, just one driveway permit? Yes. yes. So you're calling this long road here an existing driveway? Yes. It went into the Florence Luscombe Cottage, which is right in there someplace. How long has it been abandoned? It's not been abandoned. Has someone been using it? Because, I mean, I live at 113A. I don't remember ever seeing that road. I'm just that, I'm curious where, um, how you get to it. Yeah. How do you get to it? What, excuse me? Where does it where does it start? Right, right where your index finger is. I mean, I know where it starts on the paper. Where on the road does it start? When you're um, driving out, past, would, you pass Mr. Sir. Norcross's house. Yeah, and you keep going just before um, you get to the end of his field, major roadway going off, major driveway going off to your left. The just, one that's just been built recently? Well, it's, it's been improved, but it's been there since Florence Luscom, who was there in the 40s, 30s. Where is it with regard to that black and red house that's just been... It's way before that. It's before that. Yes. So right now it goes back to a place in the back that's just been built recently, right? And you could also take it all the way to Florence Luscom's old cottage if you wanted to. Is that the abandoned cabin? Yes. Yeah, okay. Further comment from the board? I mean, I, I mean, my my initial thing, and I, I could be misremembering from a, 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 another um, conceptual review, maybe. But I, it, it seems as though we had had this discussion. Um, as far as the, t unless something has changed, as far as the town of Tamworth is concerned, there are only three lots here. No, the five lots are what there is, and it, according to town tax records, right. And okay, because I don't see that. Right. No, you're you're correct. the The lot on the the other side of the river, um, no one was knowledgeable about that till I did the survey, but I did a survey for Gardner and Susan several years back. Gave a copy to Cassandra to have them update the tax map and it never got updated. But you were supposed to request that those updates before uh, January 1st of this year, I believe it was, or was it two years ago? I can't remember. But that was submitted to Cassandra. For whatever reason, Carter Graphics never updated it. Um, I, my understanding is that what we have to what we can act on and, and make decisions on are what what exists in the town tax records now. I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I. I don't. I don't necessarily doubt that. You, 
that maybe these are these are lots of record. But as far as the town is concerned, which is what we can act on, there are three lots there, and we're ending up with five lots here. And that's so. What you're making reference to is that concept of reversing involuntary merger. I'm not saying that necessarily. Okay. Well. There was a thing about reversing involuntary merger. Correct, and that's what you were referring to. Right. I don't. And as long as you made a request before a terminal date, which was yeah, got, January first um, of this year or January first of the previous yeah. year, um, then the town is supposed to um, reach correct on the tax mail, and the town just and that request was made, but the town didn't do it. Well, perhaps we need to see a copy of the request, and that might just simplify it. I mean, obviously, if the town didn't follow through on a request and Cartographics hasn't recorded it, that's something that would need to be dealt with. But the the evidence that the request was made would make would would simplify the argument about whether we're talking about something that isn't there or whether we're just talking about a process that wasn't completed. I don't think I I didn't keep any copy. I think I just presented it to Cassandra and asked her to. Update the tax map. This was I don't know when did when did I do the work for you? When we it, you mean? No, no. Yeah, um, I mean I we can't, we can't just assume that. I mean it's. I know, did it's the work for Gardner in 2012. To. To correct the tax map and show these lots of record. Right. Okay. And so um, you made that request in 2012. And so, Gardner, you've been getting tax bills for three lots instead of five for six years? I don't know how many lots are physically listed on my tax bill, but. You get a bill for each lot, you get a separate bill for each lot. So, I think we get one tax bill, period. So on, on okay. If you if you go and, and, and I mean th this is for for better or worse. This is this is my understanding. This is what we have to deal with. You go out in, you go out in the hall here and you look up who owns what lot, what lots are where. You you own three lots. And that's what that's what we have to. We can't we can't just do a de facto subdivision. We we, can, we can't say, yeah, you're right. It's probably it should be four lots instead of three to start with, because we have no way of we have no way of knowing that. We have no way of knowing what the. Perhaps there was a reason why the assessor's office didn't change things. I have no idea. We have no we just have no way of knowing that. And no paper trail at this point of what might but or might not happen. are also hopelessly screwed up. Uh, oh, I I am not I'm not no, that, that but that's not the that's not the issue. Well, they've got Florence Lusson's well lot which is here. They've got it shown over here. That's but that's not that's not for us to act on tonight, right? It's If if, uh, if if you had come in and said, "Hey, yeah, the four the four lots were are are not shown on the tax maps right. They should look like this." That's one thing. But to, but but we are being asked to look at something that looks like you look at the tax map. It's I mean you said you say it right here. There's three tax right. lots, and then there are five lots here. You go from three to five. That's a subdivision. That's not a value line adjustment. How do we reconcile? How do we sitting here reconcile that? I don't. I don't know how we can reconcile that. Do, 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 does that? I'm not. Try, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm looking at this, and and, and to me, we're. Be, this is now one, two, three, four, five lots, whereas the town uh, records the, only show three. Only show three. And even if we exclude the pie, right? Which that's. Um. Yeah. Whole other. I mean, the application is pretty clear in terms of saying location of properties. It's uh, tax map and lot numbers. Mm -hmm. It's not book and page. I mean, it's 
it's what the application tells us right. we're dealing with. I, I just, you know, I'll interrupt this flow for a minute because, in fact, I know we have a letter of record from the, one of the abutters that's asking us to not make a decision tonight because they were not able to be present um, because of a question about the legality of a, of a property line. And I'm wondering if it might solve a couple of problems to just keep the hearing open till our next meeting. Um, so that would allow, and we, we, can, we can introduce the letter, but that would allow us to perhaps um, get more information about the lots, um, perhaps find some kind of a paper trail about the request for the reversal of the um, involuntary merger, um, and also allow this other abutter to appear. So. Okay. Um, I, yeah, this, this conversation could continue quite a bit, but I, I thought in view of the fact that there was another D discrepancy uh, question in front of us that okay. we could hear um, from that abutter's attorney and address the request in that letter and then see if we couldn't put okay. all the, the issues together in one little Easter basket. May I ask a procedural question? Sure. Whose responsibility is it to get to see to it that the tax maps match what we're looking at? Who, whose job would that be? The selectman. How do you believe? I'm quite certain it's the selectman's yeah. responsibility. Okay. Yeah. So not his. It, not well, ours. It, it's, no, the, it's the selectman. The the assessor's off. My understanding is the, the right. assessor's office is under the selectman supervision, supervision, and it would be the assessor's office that would be responsible for those processes and getting the information to cartographics that then updates the maps. Mm -hmm. So you've got information that comes in from whatever source yes. um, of changes or corrections including or whatever, us. and us. that goes to the assessor who processes the information in whatever way is appropriate for whatever it is, and if it actually changes the map, then that information is fed over generally once a year to cartographics for an adjustment to the map. So, and who, so once who a year, generates the request to the selectman to do that with the assessor's office and all that? Is if that someone him? comes to the, to the assessor's office mm -hmm. with a request for a change, or if information comes from any number of sources, from um, from a property owner or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I've done it myself in Effingham as the as the code officer. I found a discrepancy between deeds and the maps, and sent the process through with documentation showing that in fact the right of way that they're showing is not 25 feet; it's 50 feet or whatever, and documented that and sent it up to Cartographics for correction or adjustment in the next cycle of mapping. So, so I'm just asking that when we leave here tonight, when we don't we don't act on this application tonight, who gets in touch with the selectman to get in touch with the assessor? That's his responsibility? At this I, I, point, okay. we don't, at this point it would be up to the property owner to provide the paper trail that they made this request I because, okay. I mean, the only other option we have to take is to is is to comb through the catacombs of assessor's office history to see if they missed something, and I don't think we've got the capability to do that. Um. Um, well, I, I'm thinking that your idea of taking it in a slightly different direction for just a moment, because um, it might affect the outcome. Um, is a is a good idea. So what, you're you're. John Smith. I'm here for the dollars. Okay. Uh, how would you like to proceed with this? Well, this I just got involved with this with for the on behalf of the Jollies. They've asked me to attend tonight and and ask that the board table this because of of a potential apparent dispute. And if I could, I can just point here. Sure. The understanding is from a letter from Paul. The, the question is this piece on the south side of the river, and apparently Paul and his, his research has determined that this is actually part of the Norcross property, whereas uh, the Jollies 
line basically splits this triangle. There's a plan of record from 62 that's recorded. It's always been conveyed since 1962. A line running here. I have a copy of that plan if you'd like to see it. That would be helpful. Yes. Thank you. Um, and that's the way the property is conveyed out in 1962 and has always been conveyed. I have another five of them. It's not. Bring this up. It's a boomer plan. Yes, sir. I do. Thank you. And you'll see the line kind of on the north uh, westerly side runs straight down to the river, which would run sort of like this. So we're it's looking at the little tiny out. triangle at the oh, top. Right well, here. no, that triangle is actually stone wall. You go, and it's okay. unfortunate the photocopy didn't come out very sure well. It would we're run we're to the river here. here. This line would run to the river. And so we're dealing with this a piece that apparently impacts both the state and my client. That's the triangle. Okay. Okay. And so that's basically the triangular piece on the river. Again, since 62, it has always been conveyed straight down to the river as parts of the Norcross property. The town records, the tax map, I understand they're not surveys, but it's been shown like that. Uh, just yesterday, I got a plan from Mr. Um, Jolly that um, I wasn't able to copy it. But it is a prior plan from 1939, which again shows, and it's difficult to see. Uh, I thought a copy of a blueprint. Yes, but shows okay. that same line um, running from the road to the river, which again extends down to Great Hill Road. So, so to, to the west, that's a different property. The west is the state property. Okay, and and that's Hemingway State or, Forest. Hem yes, and my understanding is that a portion of, of this being claimed is also in state property, about half, about split in half. And, and Paul's line, again, uh, you know, our line runs straight through this and we would claim about half of that at least, and the state the other half. I don't know if the state has a Objected, or I don't know if the state is. Well, they were notified as an about her. About. So, um, so as you can see, there, there, there's a potential boundary line dispute here, and certainly uh, the Jollies don't don't want to see a plan go on record that creates another tax lot of record, which claims a portion of what they believe is their land, and is by deed and has been since '62. So that's that's. The reason they've asked it to be tabled, do some more research, and perhaps have a better answer. Perhaps um, I don't know if there will be a better answer, but know a little bit more about this. But there certainly is an issue here with this this piece. Shall I read the letter into the record, or do you want to? Um, it's addressed to you. Well, I, I, I can I can read it because it is addressed to me. Sheldon Perry, chair. We recently received a certified letter as a butters to Gardner and Susan Norcross, whose boundary line adjustment request is on the agenda for the May 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Tamworth Planning Board. Information available to, I'm sorry, in the town office, the certified letter and subsequent letter from Paul King describe a lot discrepancy between the Norcross and Jolly properties that we have asked our attorney to review. Furthermore, we are unable to attend the May 23rd meeting given a pre-planned trip abroad beginning May 21st. <coughs> we therefore respectfully request that no action be taken by the Planning Board on the item of the Norcross boundary line adjustment at the May 23rd, 2018 Tamworth Planning meeting while our attorneys look into the lot line discrepancies along the Swift River between the Norcross and Jolly properties. We do expect to return from our trip by the middle of June and will be able to meet with the planning board at its next meeting or at a, another mutually convenient time. 
Thank you for your consideration. Sincerely yours, Robert E. and Cheryl A. Jolly. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, well, all right. I can only recognize one person at a time. Go ahead with Eric. All right. Go, go ahead. All right. Can you just um, enlighten us on how you found the triangle? Yes. Um, <clears throat> this land, all in here, is in uh, lot two, in the third range. I believe it's the third range. And um, this land over here is in lot three. These are the original town lots dating from, you know, colonial times. Sure. Okay. Um, the Jacksons, who lived in the house that Gene Ulitz has always lived in, who, I don't know the names of the people that live there now, uh, the first house on the left as you're going up the old mail road, okay, they, oh, yeah. they had the entire, in the early 1800s, Don's writing furiously here. <laughs> they had the entire lot two. Okay? And they conveyed off the southern half of lot two. And most of that is on um, the portion of uh, 113A down here, the Havelock property. The Havelock property being the town gravel pit. Mm -hmm. A highway, a garage, whatever you want to call that, plus the next property down, the Havelock property, and I don't have the date, sorry, but uh, sometime, I don't know, in the 20s or 30s, the owner of the Havelock property sold off the portion of the southern half of Lot 2 to the landowners over here. Mm -hmm. uh, landowners over where? On the Great Hill Road side of the Swift River. Oh, okay. Okay? And so the, the people over here, which was sort of the Prince family, um, had acquired uh, a, a fair amount in Lot 3, and this portion in the southern half of Lot 2. But they never acquired anything in the northern half of Lot 2, in particular this little triangle right here. So okay? the... And, Don said his client has uh, plans and a deed. My clients also have a, a, a deed which includes, specifically includes this triangle. Don's an excellent researcher. I'm sure he'll be able to take that back and verify everything I've done. Do you know what date is on the deed that includes the triangle? Uh, basically all of them, and it's noted in those descriptions are noted right there. So your line is basically based on the on the range road line on the range line. No. No. It would be the division line half of lot two. Okay. 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 The midpoint, the midline of lot two. Right. Gotcha. And the um, Mr. Smith, the the blue blazed line found an iron pipe found marked mark. On Paul's map, is that roughly um, the line between where you're saying that your client Correct. has some and the state owns some? Yes, that would be running. Correct. So that would be north the south. that would be the quote north south line between state in in this east, little east area west. that's being disputed. The east, east west. Well, north north south south running line. Yes. Right, it would be the east and west division point between your clients and the state in terms of what you're arguing. And the other line, is that actually the, um, um, is that the line from the drill hole? What, what, what is it, where is it? Have you got a point on Paul's map, which is where you say the, um, the line should be? I'm just curious since we have... Well, I think the line... Well, I don't want to speak for you. Are you talking about between the state land and the jolly? No, we already ascertained that that okay. was the blue blazed line and the iron pipe found that you think that might be what that is. I'm yeah. talking about the north-south line, the line running east and west, dividing the north and south properties that you say is where your clients... Ours clients would run to the river. 
So you're you're saying your client owns all the way to the river? That's right. Okay. All right. So this drill hole set, Paul, that's showing um, just and the, the, a little bit this side of the river, are you thinking that that's just a, a riverside marker? It's not... Well, you, you don't ever set anything right at the river. Okay. You know, so you always back off a little bit. So... And that, that was a convenient spot. Okay. Good okay. sized rock to put a drill hole in. Okay. All right. Okay. But the iron pipe found is something <coughs> that you found. Say that the again. iron pipe yes. that's at the end of the Blue Blaze Trail. Yes. And do you have a, a an explanation of what that marks? Yes. I think just as you've been talking, that's what um, the state, un until I did the survey, uh -huh. that's what the state and Joe Lee thought was their, their line. terminal point. Gotcha. Okay. Their terminal point, in my opinion, does not go up to that pipe. Mm -hmm. You think the terminal point is over at the at the big straight line? It, it would be just a little bit south of the pipe on the blue line mm -hmm. where it intersects the uh, the line that I've shown is the correct southern boundary for North Cross. This, this line. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, sure. Okay. So there's a question about the state. So the Jolies probably never would have known this, except you know I extended professional courtesy to let them know about it, and I also let the state know about it, and the state has. Um, written back uh, David Krauss, who's the land surveyor for uh, Forest and Lands. And he wrote back, he's going to try to look at it more, but based on my email, it appears so the state has no record titled within the north half of Lot 2. So he's, he's in agreement with that. Um, but more importantly, I would ask that you not delay this because of the Jolie's letter or Don's statement. This concerns survey lines which is something you have no jurisdiction over, and I'm sure you don't want to have any jurisdiction over. The Jolies, nor did Don, make any issue about the lots. There's wetland, there's wetlands where the lots aren't big enough, not enough frontage, none of that, which you do have jurisdiction over, did not come either on the letter or his talk. Only survey lines, and you don't have jurisdiction over that. And I would encourage you not to delay something based upon something you don't have any jurisdiction mm -hmm. over. Well, um, that may be a valid point. I just felt if we were delaying based on the discrepancy on the number of lots that there, there was an added piece of information that would be nice to be clarified. Yes, I understand that. But sorry, you had hands up. No, well, um, no. Um, uh, yeah. Laurie had her hand up. I, 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 go ahead, Laurie. Let's, let's spread the wealth. Okay. So, I'm Lorelai Gerard. I'm going to butter across the street from the property. Um, my first comment is I have no objections to the proposed lot configuration. I did have five concern out of four which were answered or included in the, in the, in the discussions from the board and from Don. The only concern I have is and I haven't seen it, but I was wondering if it was possible to see the plan that was submitted to DOT for the driveways, um, particularly the fact that on the plan my driveway is not shown, or any of the three driveways across from the project, and how it impacts what I would consider a shared driveway, which is the existing driveway for Sue and Gardner, and it's to access over one lot that's going to have a driveway permit into a second lot and a shared driveway and a reclassification on the driveway permit based on four new lots fronting on 113A, including the two existing. From my experience, submitting driveway permits for subdivisions, even though there's existing driveways, they get re-permitted and they're shown with, um, the state comes out and does um, uh, GPS and gets coordinates for these driveways, even though they are existing, but now with this application, there's actually four lots fronting on 113A. And that's all I'd ask is, I don't see where my driveway and the proposed driveway permits are going to be impacted. Um, yes. I just have a question. Is, is yours, Mr. King, is yours the only survey of this lot that's ever been done? 
Um, I've done two other workshop worksheet surveys, which you'll see in the plan references there. Uh, the first one I did for Joy Harvey, uh, which... I, I meant someone other than you. Has anyone else ever surveyed this lot before? Um, Stan Colville did this one right here. And you'll see that in the plan references. When you say the plan references, are you talking about the book and page of the deeds? Or... Oh, I see. If I may, just comment. Um, Julie's also sent me a copy of a plan that was Stanley Cor uh, Corville from uh, 1984. And that it's the Prince property. Again, my client is to the east. So it was pr uh, prior home. And again, it does reference that it uses the uh, Sumner line, but again, it runs the line straight to the river. Uh, showing Prince as the abutter and my client uh, running all the way to the river. So there is that plan also. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a it very well, it's a boundary line dispute at this point. Um, the Boomer plan has been on record, it's been conveyed since 62. The town has run that line and now being asked to create a different, a new lot. Um, from something that's been there for 50 plus years. And again, for my client to have this plan recorded, which is, which is puts on record this dispute, um, and they're just asking for some more time to, to try to delve into this and, and figure it out. <coughs> are they having, are, are they in the process of having a, a survey done themselves? Um, again, they just got the notification, so they have not, they have not, uh, hired anybody up for a survey. And it was tough, difficult to talk to them because they, they had a trip. It was pre planned. Uh, yes, Paul. You seem to be concerned about the fact that the tax map showed three lots of record. Uh, I think probably the easiest way to get past this is if I simply retitle the plan to a subdivision plan. Okay? The four lots on the north side of the Swift River all meet all your requirements to have the necessary state approvals and so forth. The lot that's on the south side of the river was never shown on the, in that part of the tax map. It's kind of like an extra thing which was separate from uh, what they were, what anybody knew about. So that is an independent thing which is unchanged. Okay, and then these four lots, you would have a subdivision plan that you would put your approval on. That sounds, at first glance, like it might be reasonable, so that the lot that's un under dispute in terms of property line would not even appear on your subdivision plan. Oh, it certainly it would. would. It would have to. We'd would have to. They it would have to appear. But I, I mean, I. Why I, does it have to appear if it's a separate? Lot that's not part it's of the not. part of the subdivision. It doesn't show up anywhere besides here as a separate lot. And, and really, Paul, you're you're showing it as creating a new. You're giving it a new lot number. Yes, but yes. this doesn't. There's nothing about this lot that meets any of our subdivision regulations at all. Right. Oh, it's right. supposed to be part of. It is, on this map, it's part of the Dorothy Colby lot crossing over the river. It's a separate paragraph in the Dorothy Colby deed. I gotcha. Yes. I gotcha. So it's a, it's a portion yeah. of that parcel right. that so, goes across the river. So that would be unchanged. These four will look exactly like this. We're just going to change this to a bound, from a boundary line adjustment to a subdivision. This would be unchanged in what way? I can't see what you're pointing you're, to. This other, this, the this, triangle. this triangle the across disputed the river. triangle. The disputed triangle. It's what it is today. It's one little paragraph that Dorothy Colby owned that nobody knew about on the south side of the river. 
but it doesn't sh it doesn't show as far again getting back to the the reclassifying this as a subdivision in on one hand takes care of potentially takes care of the question of is it three lots or four lots e either way this is now it's now five lots okay. we can't I, I don't see how any I don't see any way possible that we could or should approve this as being a a new lot now you know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense to me as, as why we would ever... But it's not a new lot. It is according to this plan. You're giving it a new tax ID. You're calling this a new lot. This has never been shown as being its own lot anywhere. So, right? so following up in your logic, if I exclude that and don't show that... You would show it as being remaining part of this, which you're saying it's part of anyway. On this, you're saying it's part of this lot. Well, it's a separate paragraph. You're giving it the same, you're calling it the same, I mean, it, I mean, maybe we're sort of mincing things here, but I, I just, I mean, I... It's either part of that parcel, it's a separate parcel, but it's part of that lot, um, or if you're trying to subdivide it out, it doesn't meet our subdivision. Okay, I'm not trying to subdivide it. So, if I didn't, if I come back in here with four lots in here and call it a subdivision, and don't draw that on it, then where? Does but that I draw be? that on a separate plan and record that at the registry. Okay, as an existing lot of record. Well, how is the how is it drawn? On the tax map, is the the is the triangle there on the other side of the river? No. No. Okay. So, so we still, we still, that triangle isn't wouldn't be part of this unless you resolve. Yeah, we still the, haven't crossed that bridge yet of the fact that the tax map is not reflective of your map. We still haven't. Crossed I would be pleased as punch to have our tax maps accurately reflect where that little pie is and who it belongs to. But it doesn't appear that your subdivision request is going to do that without the the other party, the two parties, you know, finding agreement um, as to how much of the triangle belongs to who. Because your client believes it's theirs all the way to the river. Or well, not. I understand what Paul's saying, and that makes sense. You have a four-lot subdivision north of the river. And then that lot, and I understand what Paul is saying, it's a standalone lot, it's a separately described parcel. And what I don't want to get into here, I guess, is a litigation over the ownership of this lot. But all, what I did want to raise, of course, is my clients do claim ownership of that lot based upon the survey, based upon uh, the tax map. And now there's potentially going to be a plan recorded that, right. that creates a new tax lot number out of their parcel. Which is, which is yeah, different than what they believe to be a home. I know nothing about surveying or judgment or anything of the sort, but from what I'm understanding, what Paul is saying, what you just said, if the four lot subdivision boundary line adjustment was left as is, that little triangle, which I could give two hoots about, was given up for. I think it might be called quick claim deed. I think that could be then omitted from any plan whatsoever if your client and myself sign papers saying I give up ownership of that triangle. Does that resemble anything that makes sense or not? That is certainly an option. Um, it's a very it, tidy option. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, but it, all right. So just to kind of keep going on this. If I come in with a four lot subdivision here and don't give this uh, a lot, but I do indicate that it is Norcross property. Okay, but I'm not asking for your any action on this. Okay, you could you're comfortable. You you would be comfortable, I would assume. I would be comfortable then, if it was indicated that it was property under dispute. Well, I'm the surveyor and I'll decide how to label it. Okay, okay. but you can label it as Norcross property and 
you can say that the planning board has no jurisdiction over that, but I, for one, would not be comfortable voting to approve a plan that stated ownership of a piece of property where it's been publicly stated in an open meeting that the ownership is under dispute, especially if one of the property owners has already expressed a willingness to resolve it all through a process. I mean, I don't want to hold up gardeners. That was only an idea. I yeah, no, 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 I understand. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to hold up gardeners process. Um, and believe me, I know I know how organized Gardner is. There's no question. But what he's thought through, what he wants here. Um, but is there a rush that means that we can't get that little bit of it resolved, so that we have a nice, tidy plan that goes to the registry that that improves and enhances the records of our town-owned property rather than adding another layer of confusion? We've got, a, we've got a little confusion bit here. We have an opportunity to straighten it out. And as planning board members, it may not be part of our direct responsibility um, in terms of subdivision, but certainly in terms of planning for you know how we view the town and how we look at property, saying, hey, look, Here's a here's an area under dispute, and we have an opportunity to tidy it up and have the map that goes and is recorded that the registry takes care of it, we hope, for once and for all. It's not unreasonable to think that that's a good approach to take. Why, well, why I, I, leave it hanging out there to dry? Well, because a lot of times boundary line disputes don't get handled overnight. And you don't have any jurisdiction, so I think it's really important that you um, you only try to enforce what you have jurisdiction over. So maybe we should summarize what our disputes really are, because there's more than just one. And I um, I, I think we need a, a summation because I, I, I'm getting the feeling that our discussion could really continue for quite a while, and. In my own thinking, if there's one dispute, it's one dispute too many, and it, it precludes, uh, you know, it, it may pre preclude uh, 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 moving forward on the application. So um, I might offer that we do that. Um, it seems to me that I'm, I'm just going to start. Um, the obvious one is the one we're discussing about the disputed property on the, well, the south side of the Swift River between the Jolly and the uh, North Cross properties. Um, we have an application that requires map numbers and lot numbers, which this is not offering. And we also have a dispute on the number of properties, the tax map version versus the version that Paul has presented here. That's, that's three disputes that I'm coming up with. And we have a fourth question about the detail of the driveways. Okay, there's a detail of the driveway. Requested seeing that. So, the, okay. so because the driveway stuff hasn't come in yet, we actually don't have the location of the driveways on the on the plat, and um, and a butter has requested that the driveways across uh, be shown. So, so we, are, we may not require that, but I mean, my feeling. <laughs> And the classification of the four lots and what their driveways are, not just because they're existing, but once you create a subdivision, then those existing driveways become reclassified and get re-permitted. What I heard was we only have one driveway. Right. And we have a shared driveway that has a that needs to be also reclassified. So um in an ideal world, some of these uh, disputes can be resolved in a reasonable time frame. You know, reasonable is a is a is not a 
hard number, but it's something that I think, um, as a board, um, I think we might want to consider postponing uh, this this public hearing. Mm -mm. It's open. We just need to continue it. Okay. I'm okay. all right. Uh, it, so we can adjourn the public hearing without closing it. No, we don't adjourn it. We just continue it. We just okay. I mean, if that's what. Well, I'm you're not saying. closing it. Let's put it that way. Okay. But, but what we can do <laughs> is we can make a motion to, to continue the public hearing to such and such a date and such and such a time, and then then we're yeah. done for the evening and with that and go okay. on to our other a, business. A, a, a reasonable time frame wherein these disputes can be addressed. Yes. Wait a minute. I'm talking about what you're talking about is continuing this boundary line adjustment. And what I've suggested is revi altering it into a subdivision application. Well, that would be a new application. Okay. So do you want to withdraw this application yeah, then? Yeah, that's and a good question. resubmit um, a new application without prejudice on our part? I, I see that as the only way to get over this um, three, lot, three lots, lot three tax thingy. map lots going into four. Okay? Yep. Okay. Okay. And then I will not show the, the triangle on the south side of the river as a fifth lot. Right. Okay. You, you would simply, it wouldn't, I wouldn't give it a tax map number. I would simply have an arrow saying <coughs> that's Norcross property. So it's really not part of what you're uh, Okay, what but, you're so, but that still could be a a a point of contention within a butter, which could be problematic. But not. not I I have total stuff. confidence Don's going to do great research and he's going to verify okay. all my stuff. Uh, that's fair. It would be nice that at the point when that is resubmitted and we open a public hearing on that, that we have some evidence from the two property owners that. Yeah, they figured it out. I, I think we should have a a record of the resolution of that. I, I'm, I mean, I, I, it's you, Paul is right. It's not under our jurisdiction. Okay, all right. just, be nice to see. But, I'm just but, saying uh, that it that we would can, be. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. You know, I, I haven't had an opportunity to speak with my clients at length about this at all, and 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 Paul is is presenting what he found through his research. There are other factors. The, potential ownership of it, which um, hopefully we don't have to get into, and, and uh, I guess what I'm getting to is hopefully we can find a resolution to this and kind of proceed as Paul is suggesting, okay. the subdivision, and then deal with that lot separately. That was right. our concern, so, so, is to create this lot of well, record so first, tax map. So, Paul, are you withdrawing this application? Um, I, I think that would be the most logical thing at this point. If if, okay, so you just have to tell us that you're going to do that. Do you need all new fees and? I would make a motion that we don't require all new fees for this. I suspect the applicant's going to incur a few more costs um, from his, um, from Paul, and uh, the only thing that we would need is it is going to have to be re-noticed. So we do incur right. those costs. Um, so the the cost for noticing, if there's just a flat application fee, isn't there a different fee between a BLA and a subdivision? Um, we would have. Could you apply what they've already paid? Yeah, I think, and just pay the difference. I, I think we could do that. I think we can work it out so that if the BLA is less than then the subvision fee will apply what you've already paid for the boundary line adjustment to that, but we would need the fees for notification because yeah. the new hearing would be have to be noticed. Am I? That's that's right. That's a fact. So, so we'll work with you as best we can to not incur costs that are just on paper, um, but if it's actual costs, it's actual costs. So I think I think we got a plan as far as that goes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, like I said, I'm very comfortable with Don's research abilities, and uh, I think that'll be resolved. 
one way or another. I think. <laughs> so I don't know if we need a, a motion procedurally or just want to say so, that the planning board accepts. Well, from what I know, um, I mean, I I can adjourn the, the public hearing without closing it. No, we're 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 done with this. So we're going to. The, we're, well, we're gonna, the public hearing goes away because you're withdrawing the yeah. application. The applicant is withdrawing. Right. The, is Thank withdrawing. You. So, the applicant is withdrawing this boundary line adjustment, um, and you know the planning board appreciates the effort to to uh, understand what our needs are and how to do it. And uh, we'll look. We look forward to seeing the the new application of it as a subdivision. Is that. Sort of. Well, we still have the issue of the tax maps not matching. No, so, no, he's going to base it off the current tax so maps. So you're going to base it off the current tax map, it's, which shows three lots, and you're going to be subdividing and adding one lot, more lot, with that subdivision. Do, I, do we have that basically correct? Right. Okay. So do you want money for four lots or for one lot? One new lot? So, uh, which is exactly the same as what a bound, what the fee for a boundary line adjustment. Well, whatever the fee should be, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll compensate for whatever. The, the fee would be four hundred dollars per lot. Okay, and we're sort of saying, well, there's three lots existing. Keep it in the bond. Do you want money for one additional lot, which is a hundred dollars, or do you want, which is equal to what's been paid for the boundary line adjustment? Um, I have to look at the fee. I have to look at the fee schedule. So you're going to come to us for a four lot subdivision. Yes. From out of three lots. Yes. Okay. It's going to be so a subdivision, be subdivision and a boundary line adjustment. Right. Yeah, because that, you're going really, to have to move some of the lines. Yeah. You're not just adding. So I, I don't know how that affects the. But that's what that's what it is, right? So we're going to be, you're going to be adjusting boundaries. It's hundred dollars per lot line between the existing lots, but then also the other one. Um, it, yeah, you've got three lots of record. It's going to go to four. Right. So it, according to this fee schedule, a subdivision is a hundred dollars per lot. That's what I just said. Yeah. So yeah. So that to me is a, is four hundred dollars because wow. you're dealing with four lots. But we're saying oh. but we're saying there's three lots of record, and this is sort of a, a semantic thing, a, a hodgepodge between boundary line adjustments and one new lot. Well, no, you're creating four new lots because you're changing the lines for all of them. And we've already paid three hundred dollars. Right. Right. Take the application fee for the boundary line adjustment. Add and one more lot. Subtract it from the four hundred dollars. That's what's owed. Yep. One hundred dollars. That's right. You've already paid three hundred. Okay. You've already paid three hundred. So you well, paid well, no, he, he's he's paid almost three hundred, but that's for the cost of the notice and all that kind of stuff. Right. So you right. need a hundred dollars plus the cost of the newspaper notice and the above no, notice. No, we need a total of four hundred dollars paid for four new lots. I yes. don't know how much you paid. You paid a hundred dollars for the boundary line adjustment, right? Right, and, and what I'm right. saying... In, in terms of the fee schedule, there are other publication notices and abutters and all that sort of stuff, yeah, so which is something else. But you paid $100 for a boundary line adjustment fee. And so we'll apply that $100 to the $400 that would be required for, for a four-lot subdivision. I would, I would only argue that it... Again, we're, we're getting this convoluted thing, but I would call it a two-lot subdivision and a boundary line adjustment, because three lots actually exist already, and you're taking you're only taking one of the lots and sp splitting it into two. Right. You and could then talk it that way, or you could say there's one uh, one additional. Well, there's, there's different we, ways either, to look either way, but I wouldn't say I would different, different ways to look at. Yeah, but but in 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 trying to. But don't you have four new frontages? Well, frontage doesn't equal lot. It does in this case. You have four new lots with four frontages. Only one lot originally on the tax map that frontage. Becca's suggesting before lots four hundred dollars minus the hundred dollars of boundary line adjustment. I'm saying one new lot that's a hundred dollars. 
Andy saying two lots. That's sort of in between. Why don't we go with? Why don't you go with Andy's suggestion? Why don't we say you've already paid the hundred dollars for the boundary line adjustment? Pay two hundred dollars more for the two lot subdivision. That's exactly what Andy just yeah. said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's just do that. Anybody? Do you want? Should we vote on that? It's a bizarre compromise, but we're trying to. Okay, but you still to, need ten dollars per butter, and you still yeah. need a forty-five dollar application. I'm sorry, not a publication. Uh, publication notice right. fee. You don't need the plot recording fee because I've already paid that. You've already paid You've that. Already already paid paid that. that. The and the L chip. Check and the L chip. Have. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. And okay. And the cost of digital. So we're giving you three <laughs> lots, four lots for two. <laughs> anyway, um, so not quite. So how is it? So they don't look like that, that in mind. We no longer have a public hearing because the application was withdrawn. Correct. Right. Right. Oh. And it's almost nine o'clock. Um, so the ball, is, I guess, is in your court with a new application. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. I think we're settled. Right. Are we settled? Okay. All right. We're all confused now, but we're going to be much less confused next time, and it's going to be. Well, I think this was a process. I mean, we needed to go through this process. We did. Okay. There was no way to shortchange this process. Could you, could you spell the butter's name that John Smith's representative? represented? Okay, so... J-O-L-L-E-Y. I'm sorry? J-O-L-L-E-Y. Yep. J-O-L-L-E-Y. Thank you. Robert and Cheryl. It's okay. So the three... The three lots that are in existence right now, where are oh, they? So I need they're to get this over here. But that's not how they... So that's actually, not how they... Okay, I do that's not how the tax map shows up. Not that that's not how the box should look, but that's not how the tax map shows up. Well, that's the question I have. Good night. If Thank you for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, they can have it. It's not, it's not valid anymore. He really needs to do four more. So that's simple. It's going to end up with... Because these are going to be one entire lot, aren't they? Somebody else is doing wow. Sorry. They're not. Yeah, but all, all he's combining. Lots all lots are going to change. But that's fine. But, but okay. um, technically, there's only this, going to be one um, additional lot. This should go. This should go. We don't have an application anymore, but still, be, it's still. A, go it still should go in the file. Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I so would like to give those to Paul. So the board is yeah. not done yet. Mr. Chairman. Sorry. The board is not done. Um, yeah, point of order, point of order. We're having... Um, was there a motion as to the fees, or is it by consensus of the board? A consensus of the board. That sounds really good. Sounds yeah. like a consensus of that. Oh, this isn't yours. I should give it. No, this no. is mine. Yeah. And Paul, um, did you take... Do you have the, the, um, the, the steel... Um, subdivision application that was no longer able to be uh, fulfilled because we, we, I, we, that plat has been hanging around here for quite a long time. Yeah. Do you have that? I, I do not. That That's in limbo, and I've not heard from that client in a year. So, um, sorry, but you're just going to have to hold on to that. Well, but we... You know, it's because it's in limbo. There's nothing we can. I mean, it's never going to be fulfilled because you know we needed two signatures, and we, you know, the person is no longer with us, so it's never ever going to come to fruition. Is this it? Pretty sure this is it. But you you approved it, right? Well, it was approved on the condition. That's right. Um, but the condition will never ever be met. Right, but you should still hold on to these because that's a condition of the plan, and, and that's where your process ends. Or but the condition will never be met. Right. So, so it's a no, defunct no, but, uh, uh, plan. So I'm assuming I'm just going to come back in with a plan with just no. his name on it and the proper probate so reference. This plan is no longer valid. Right, but it's part of your rec part of your paper book. It's essential that you keep it. Oh, right. Well, if it's never ever going to...
go anywhere. I just don't know that what, why we need to do that. Um, it, it, it's it's part of the paper trail as far as you've gotten. Well, I mean, I, I suppose there's a. I suppose we could pull it up and put it in a file, but it's just it's dead. It's a dead ender. It, that, uh, all right. I mean, yes. Yeah. I'm not gonna. You, you should. You know, sure. if it's we hold on to it, that's fine. Just I'll, like I'm I'll sure you're that. keeping one copy of this copy okay. line just in your file. Put it up in the You, you need that kind of stuff as part of the paper trail. Right. Okay. So um, the board has a few other little final bits of business. Sorry. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you, well. everyone. Good to see you, Gardner. Yeah, you too. Have a good night. Yeah, take care. <laughs> if you think it's simple, you haven't tried it yet. Um, so I wanted to make my notes. Just a couple of notes, everybody. Um, so, um, bottom line is, I think we need a uh, work session because, yes. because, because we, um, Becca's got a um, a nice proposal for uh, the fire chief, which I think we should just yes, review. I think it's too late to do anything tonight. If anybody argues with that, I'm going I'm I'm to be very well, I, didn't, upset. I, didn't, I didn't print it out, but I sent it to everybody. Right. I just yes, used David's it. header and the language okay. from the thing and stuff. So. Okay. Do um, I have everything? Put the L-chip check in. Is the L-chip? Thank you. But it shouldn't, it shouldn't actually take long if we put it on an agenda to accept it, to just review it. And okay. And I mean, there's, there's various things that have come up, and we've, we've decided we need to evaluate where we are as far as the planning board in terms of the master plan, what we've been implementing and what, what might be a loose end, where, 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 we've, where we've dropped the ball. There's the social event, letter from the library trustees, which was very interesting, etc. So why don't we set a date for a... Uh, so here we are, May 23rd, one... We don't know what Melissa's schedule is. No, but ordinarily we would have a work a work session on the second Wednesday. Okay, so that would be June sixth. Third June I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Today's the twenty third, right? So that's one Wednesday. Uh, we're we're going so for the second June? of the month. Not we, the not two We don't count the weeks. We do second and fourth Wednesdays if we so if we, okay, the second Wednesday, I'm sorry, is uh, the 13th. Why don't we do the 13th? So let's schedule a, a work session on June 13th. Can you put that in a minute? Yes. All right. At 7 p.m. What's that? At 7? At 7? Seven. 7 o'clock here. And we need to notice it. We need to notice it this time. But I think not in the newspaper. I think if you just hang them up. Yes. Because yeah. In fact, is a is a meeting. Yeah. It's so. Um, this is not a public hearing. So I'm going to make a note again. I've I've got to be in touch with Melissa. Melissa will take care of that. And so I think we're I think we're all set. Um, all right. Motion to it. Second. Boy, it's, beat me to it. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Who's all right. Motion. Who? No one's opposed. All right. Oops. Very good, everybody. Thank you for all your patience and input.